Welcome to the Jamie Luce Podcast. I'm your host, Jamie Luce. Thank you for listening today. All of my blogs, social, and YouTube links can be found on my website, jamieluce.com. If you enjoy this podcast, you can support it by liking, subscribing, getting notified, and sharing this broadcast. Another way you can help is by rating and reviewing on Apple Podcast. My hope and goal in every episode is to give you tools found in Scripture, either by teaching, discussions, testimonies, or interviews, that encourage and equip you as you navigate living a real Christian walk in a difficult world. I would love to hear from you. Whether you have a comment, question, or prayer request, you can email me at mail at jamieloose.com. If you're watching on YouTube, drop me a comment. I'd love to partner with you on your journey of faith. If you're listening today on any podcast platform, take a screenshot and tag me, and I'll post it to my Instagram story. And now, join me for today's episode. Welcome to the Jamie Luce Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are continuing in our series of spiritual warfare. I know this has been quite a journey, and we are almost through all of the pieces of the armor. Um, today, we will be focusing on the helmet of salvation. And I, there's so much here. I'm going to dive right in. And if this will be the day that you need to be um, diligent about taking notes, you're going to want to have a pad and paper ready for uh, a pad and pen read, ready with your Bible. I've got so many scriptures. You want to go back and um, look at these yourself over and over again. You're going to want to take these scriptures to heart. You're going to want them to go deep into your spirit. Um, this is a subject that the the enemy will do everything he, everything he can even now to disrupt this time so that you're not able to hear this message, because I promise you that this message will bring hope, help, and deliverance. Um, it will bring healing. It will give you instruction. We will be tackling the ways that the enemy and the strategy of the enemy to come into our minds and what that does to our spirits, our souls, and our bodies. And that without the helmet of salvation, we are on a battlefield that is set in array against us and we've got to know what to do and how to do it in order to maintain the victory that christ has already purchased for us so we do not enter this at a deficit we enter in as victors but we need to use what god has given us and not uh, be unwise we need to be wise stewards of what god has given us wise wise stewards of the um, armor that god has provided for us so today I want you to really focus in on, on what I'm about to teach. And I hope that you will go back and listen to this as many times as you need to. Like I said, be taking notes. You're going to want to. I've got a lot here for us. So uh, the question I want you to be thinking about, and I'm not going to kind of give you an assignment until the very end, but I'll give you kind of a snapshot of that. I want you to be thinking about the thought life that you've been having and what thoughts specifically have been causing you turmoil or pain or confusion or anger. I want you to be thinking about those particular thoughts and I want you to write them down because we're going to address those thoughts and we're going to, I'm going to show you what to do with those thoughts okay so I, I know this is going to be helpful and we're going to go ahead and, and dive right in so our our scripture reference that we have been using this entire time is ephesians 6 10 through 18. i'm going to go ahead and read it again but then we're also going to go to a couple passages i'm going to give you a lot of scripture but one additional main passage of scripture as well. So this first one, Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. You've got to know that right off the bat. Your battle is not with people. Even if words are coming to you through people, your battle is not with people. Your battle is with the spiritual. 
And um, if, if you are familiar at all with Derek Prince, you can find his stuff all over the internet. But he was very instrumental in being used along with people like, um, oh my goodness, um, like Lester, Lester Summerall. Um, and then of course the, uh, oh, what was his name? I won't waste time on it. But anyway, they were instrumental in people getting actually delivered. Jesus spent more time bringing deliverance than he actually did healing. The deliverance had to come first. We need to be delivered. And the way that Derek Prince would give a definition of a demon spirit is that it is simply a person without a body. And if you understand that it is a person because it just doesn't have a body. You are a spirit, and right now you are alive in your body. Well, there are spirits who are not in bodies, and they are looking for an inroad into our lives to bring destruction into our lives. And they are persons without a body. So when you understand it is a person who is taunting you, talking to you, uh, saying things over and over to you, it will help you to understand how to battle and what to do with that. Because if you just think it's out there and it's just thoughts looming in the sky somewhere out there, you won't know how to deal with it. And you actually, the devil can make you think it's not real and that you really can't touch it, that you can't affect it, that you can't change it. That's a lie. Okay. So I want to give that to you at first. Paul tells us this is who you're fighting. You are fighting against all of these spiritual forces, not people. Okay. Now people without bodies, but you understand what I'm saying. So let's go on. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Okay, so that's our reference. This is the armor of God. That's where we're going. But today I'm taking us in a little uh, different direction scripturally to back that up. Okay. So let's look at this, taking the helmet of salvation. Now, last episode, we talked about taking up the shield of faith. And that take up was an actual very specific word used in the Greek. And it had its very own meaning. This taking the helmet of salvation is actually a different meaning. And I'm going to give that to you. So taking means to receive something offered or transmitted by another to take someone up in one's arms or one's spirit. So you have to see what Jesus has given us here, what God has already provided for us. This helmet of salvation, to take this helmet, is something that's being offered to you, and it is being transmitted to you. And it is, in essence, the Lord coming and taking you up in his arms, taking you unto his spirit. You, are, you have to understand that taking, you're taking this, in, the battle we're going to be talking about is how you're going to deal with this, how things get taken into our spirit. We take them up, okay? What we are to take up is the helmet of salvation. Now we need to get into why we do that, but the helmet is simply a protective head covering. And the word that is used here is mentioned also in Isaiah 59, 17 for helmet. And it says, for he put on righteousness. And this is talking about God. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head. And he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. Now that's God on our behalf. Okay, if God needs to put on, if he puts on a breastplate of righteousness and a helmet of salvation, saints, so do we. We have definitely got to do this. This is a necessity. This isn't a, a piece of armor you can forget. Why do we need a helmet? Why does this represent a helmet? Most people know this, but we're going to dive into this. It is because our minds are where the battle is. Our mind is our thought life. And we have to cover our minds with the truth 
of salvation because our words will follow our thoughts. Okay, your words will follow your thoughts. So I'm going to take you on a trail. I want you to track with me. Please stay focused. What is salvation? If we're taking up the helmet of salvation, most people think of salvation is that I'm saved from my sins. That's actually very correct. However, the Bible is full of all kinds of ways that we are saved. What this word salvation is, it's a very large word. And I want to give that to you first so you understand what it is that you're putting on your head, what salvation you are putting on your head, okay? What, what your brain, your thought life, your mentality, what it needs to be covered in, okay? Psalm 103 verses 1 and 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Now, the reason we need to know is because wrapped up in this salvation helmet are many, many benefits. It is not just salvation from your sin, many benefits. So, and he says, don't forget them. I, how, how am I able to bless the Lord, oh, my soul? By not forgetting all the benefits of what God has done for me, by walking in those benefits. So here's a passage of scripture that we're going to dissect a bit. And I want you to really note this one. Romans 10 verses 9 through 13. This is what it says. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture says whoever believes on him will not be put to shame for there is no distinction between jew and greek for the same lord over all is rich to all who call upon him for whoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved now we're going to dissect this, but included in that word salvation, there are five benefits. Um, I want you to write these down. Benefit number one, salvation, what we know of as salvation from our sins. Number two, deliverance. Number two is deliverance. Number three, persevering. Number four, healing. And number five, being made whole. Now I'm going to take you to one more passage of scripture, and this is going to back up what we just read in Romans. And we're going to take it line by line, and I'm going to show you all of these benefits found in this, in salvation. Psalm 103, verses 3 to 5. Who forgives all your iniquities. That's salvation from sin. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. That is healing from sickness, healing. Who redeems your life from destruction. That's deliverance and protection. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies and who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. That is preservation and wholeness. Now I'm going to give you James 5:15. And the prayer of the faith uh, the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven. We saw Jesus use this many times when he was bringing healing to people whether he brought them deliverance or healing and he would say to them even if they got healed from a sickness, he'd say to be of good cheer because your sins have been forgiven. He was letting them know, I haven't just saved you from your sickness. I've saved you from your sin. My salvation is much bigger than just the one need that you think you see in, glaring in front of you right now. You're going to have other needs and you need to know I've saved you from those. So my salvation is much deeper than just saving you from sin. It's those five things. It's healing. 
It's salvation from sin, healing from sickness, deliverance and protection, preservation, and being made whole. Let's look at, I'm going to give you, you can jot all these down. You could try to look at them, uh, look them up with me, but I'm going to go kind of fast. So you may need to just write these down and look at them later. First Peter 2, 4. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross where we get our salvation so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness by his wounds. You have been healed. Isaiah 53, 5, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. 2 Peter 2, 9, then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. We see the, that total deliverance there and deliverance out of temptation. We're going to talk about that more in a little bit, but I want you to take note of that. Psalm 34, 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around all those who fear him and delivers them. Psalm 121, verse 7. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Psalm 34, 10, the Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Did I just read that? I sure did. It's the same one. And I have the wrong version. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. I'm going to have, I wrote down the same one twice. I'm going to have to go back and get that for you. Let me look that up. So I just make sure and give you the right one. I don't want to not give you the right verse. Let's look back at Psalm 121. And verse 7. Let's see where I messed it up. Got it. Okay. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. Okay. Now let's go to Psalm 23. 1. You're all familiar probably with Psalm 23. But the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So I lack nothing in God. Romans 8, 37, yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Luke 9, verse 1 and 2, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So how can the devil attack our salvation and all that comes from it? By attacking our minds. Our minds, where all of where we have all our thoughts. So I just gave you all these scriptures. Let me put this in context. We have all these scriptures. We know that the word is true. And if we know and meditate on those scriptures, then you are fortifying your mind. Because when a thought comes that is contrary to one of those scriptures, you know how to reject it, to close the door to it. You know how to instinctively put the truth on it. When, you, when the word is in you, and I'm not talking about just I read it and it went in my mind. To meditate on something means it goes from my mind to my heart. You can meditate on God's word. You can meditate on wonderful things and take those things and make them a part of you. They can go into your spirit. They can heal your spirit, heal your soul, bring life to you where you need life, to, to heal where you feel sick. I mean, even the scripture that says hope deferred makes the heart sick. When you know that you're, you're, you're waning in your hope and it's making you sick, you've been waiting a long time. Knowing scripture in your ma inner man changes how you think. It changes how you think. But if I meditate on thoughts that are contrary to God's word, if I meditate on those things that bring trouble to my heart, if I meditate on things that are, are um, harmful to me, I don't just think about them. That meditation takes those and puts them in my spirit. It puts them in my heart. 
It puts me in danger. It brings brokenness into my spirit. Let's go back to Romans 10, verses 9 to 13. Because I'm going to kind of start piecing some things together for you. Verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, we've been talking about hearts, we've been talking about meditating, what I believe, because whatever you meditate on, whatever you take in, that's what you believe. The, decision, the decisions that you make will be based off of what you believe. That's why we can say, People will say, well, I, I know God, I'm a Christian, but they don't actually live a Christian's life. They they think they believe it, they don't believe it. This, this is a hard lesson for people to learn. We, we, don't, we aren't doers of the word, we're hearers only. I've been guilty of this. This is a hard thing for people to face. We have to face ourselves. I read a wonderful scripture this week that says, that you don't, it's it's found in Isaiah, and it's when he's talking about, that says the fast that he has chosen, he just comes out of that chapter, and he's giving instructions, and he tells them to do certain things, and he tells them uh, that they don't hide their flesh from themselves. And, and he's making reference to that if his flesh, meaning those who belong to him and whatnot have needs, I have to meet those, I should be meeting those needs, but I also heard the Holy Spirit say, there's more here, Jamie. <laughs> you don't hide your flesh from yourself. Meaning I look at my flesh. I look at my flesh so that I understand that's flesh. That's carnality. That's not walking in the spirit. I have to address what's going on in the flesh. I have to face that flesh. And this is a hard thing to face, that, that we face our weaknesses. We face our wrong beliefs, things that we have believed that were a lie. And we made decisions or make decisions based off of those things we believe. And we, the enemy knows how to get you to think a lie. He knows how to tell a lie. He's the father of all lies. That's what scripture tells us. And that there is no truth in him. So whatever he's twisting, he's taking the original and making it completely a lie. He, he takes what was original, but he's lying with it. So, you know, I've talked about this in previous uh, episodes, but he gives you fake news. He tries to, he presents you with what looks like evidence, but it is fake. It, it is twisted. It is not accurate. So let's go back to our scripture. Keep that in mind. Uh, verse 10, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believeth on him, actually believeth on him, shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all who call upon him. Whatever's available to somebody else is available to me. There are no favorites. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So let's dissect that passage. To confess with my mouth in verse 9, okay? And with the mouth, confession is made in verse 10. That means we have to choose our confession. You have to be so diligent over the words of your mouth. You make confessions all day long. You are saying things that you believe all day long. And we've got to be purposeful about the confession that we are making because our words will dictate where our life goes. It will dictate your battle. It will dictate your, um, your vision. It will dictate your relationships. Your mouth will dictate your life. Your confession matters. Our ears will hear what we say reinforcing our thoughts that we have just meditated on. So everything I'm saying, even right now, my own ears hear me. That brings strength to me. That reinforces the thought that I had that I meditated on. When I hear myself, my mind is hearing it. It doesn't matter that it's my voice. 
It, it hears it, right? We hear the word of God. What is the scripture? Um, oh, I need to look that one up about what we we hear. Oh, never mind. I'll get I'll get off track. Let's let's stay focused. You probably know where I'm going with that. And if you do, good for you. <laughs> what you meditate on goes into your heart. Let's look at Proverbs 4:23. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. You know what's in your heart based off of what your confession is. The issues of life will come out of your mouth. Jeremiah 17, 9 and 10 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind. Did you hear that? They're connected. I, the Lord, search the heart and understand. He examines the mind. To reward each person according to their conduct, according to what their deeds deserve. So our actions will be determined by our thought life and what's in our heart. And God says, I see what's in your heart and I examine the thoughts in your mind. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. This is hard for people because we, we un, the way we operate is based off of what we think we understand. And we lean on that understanding. And the Lord is telling us, you can't. If you want victory in this, you cannot lean on your own understanding. You have to put all your trust in me. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him or submit to him and he will make your path straight. You know, when we're navigating and we think this is a crooked, rocky, awful pathway we're on, it's because we're leaning on our own understanding. That's why it seems crooked. That's why it seems difficult to navigate. But when we put our trust our whole trust of our whole heart on the Lord. He says, don't lean on your understanding, what you think you can come up with. Let me, the one who examines the mind and the heart, you let me figure this out. You let me do it. And if you'll trust me, your pathway will become straight. This will not be so hard. It will not be this difficult. Psalm 1914, may these words of my mouth, or may the words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight lord my rock and my redeemer the mouth and the meditation of the heart are always connected always connected philippians 4 8 finally brothers and sisters whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That's what we should be thinking on. We need to put our minds on righteousness, put our minds on the things of God, lean into the word of God, rely on the word of God, the salvation that he has already provided in his word for us is that all of these things that we have need of are taken care of if we will let our mind be stayed on him. Proverbs 4, 20 to 22. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Now, this is Proverbs and this is Solomon talking to his son, but this is scripture meant for us by the unction of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord says to us, hear my words. Don't listen to the enemy's words. Don't listen to your own reasonings and your own understanding. Listen to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to the one's whole body. Your whole body receives health when you lean on the Lord's words. 
when you trust with your whole heart on what he has said. Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruits. Your tongue, your words will create life or create death for you. Your life will follow your words and you choose. You are choosing every time you open your mouth with what you say, you are choosing what you are receiving. You are choosing it. I can't emphasize this enough. We create with our mouth. The creator breathed his life into us and made us in his image. And we create with the words of our mouth. So in order for your words to be right, your thoughts and your meditations have to be right. We have to take those thoughts captive. Proverbs 6, 2, you have been trapped by what you said and ensnared by the words of your mouth. If you feel trapped today, God is telling us why. You have been trapped by what you said, ensnared by the words of your mouth. That's Proverbs 6, 2. We have to say what is right. We have to command our words, decree with our mouth. We have to take authority with our mouth and use those words to command salvation and all that salvation brings to us. If we go back to Romans 9, 10, and 11, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Confession is made unto salvation. You must confess to receive salvation. Confession is made unto salvation. You have to confess. You've got to use your words for life, not for death. And then you must believe. In order to have the right confession, your heart has to believe properly. The meditations have to be right in order to believe properly. Matthew 12, 34 says, brood of vipers, this is Jesus talking, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. We will know what's in our own heart and what we have meditated on based off of what's coming out of our mouth. I can know what someone else is meditating on based off of what's coming out of their mouth. Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Whatever is going on in my heart will be because it's going to come out of my mouth. I will confess it. I will create it. I will live in it. I have to understand this, that whatsoever a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You do what you believe. The devil's strategy is to attack your thoughts in order to gain access to your heart so he can affect your body. That is a strategy of the enemy. I'm going to say it again. The devil's strategy is to attack your thoughts in order to gain access to your heart and affect your body and ultimately take your soul. How does he gain access to your body? By your mind. Our minds determine our bodies. My arm on its own cannot move, lift, push, pull, do anything. My fingers can't move, my eyes, my body, everything that happens in this body, me speaking takes my thought life, it takes my brain. My arm moving takes my brain telling my arm to move. It sends the signal. And Satan knows this. So why does he want to get into your head? Because if he gets into your head, he can affect your body. He can affect everything about you if he can get in your head. Our minds determine our bodies. Our bodies respond to what we think and believe because you say what you believe. Let's look at Proverbs 18, 20. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled with the harvest of their lips. They are satisfied. You may not like it. You may be full to overflowing and you know that feeling when you've eaten too much and it just hurts and it aches because you're, you're past satisfied. You've, you've taken in too much and it aches and it makes you sick. 
We do that, folks. We do that with the words of our lips. That's what the scripture is saying. From the fruit of your mouth, a person's stomach is filled. So you can either fill it to goodness, to satisfaction, to taking away a need, or you can overfill it with what's wrong and be stuck eating that and feeling that and dealing with that. So the battlefield is in the mind. We've probably all heard that a million times. Joyce Meyer wrote a wonderful book about the battlefield of the mind. If you want more stuff, go there and get it. But the battle is definitely in the mind. And the battle in the mind is temptation. We are tempted with our thoughts. The devil can't do anything by just putting the thought there. He's tempting you to receive that thought and do something with that thought. That's a temptation. And that temptation is, um, we are tempted to let a thought go from our head to our heart, to meditate on it. We're, we're tempted to lay hold of it. We're tempted to take it and make it ours, to take ownership of that thought. That, own, that thought didn't come from us. That thought that came from the enemy. And he's wanting you to take hold of it so you take ownership. Okay? So it is at the point of the entrance of a thought that we must jump into action with the helmet of salvation. At the point of the entrance of the thought, that helmet of salvation should be at work. It should be at work. We don't prepare after. You don't let someone shoot at your head and then put your helmet on. You put your helmet on because you know the shots are going to come. So we have to put the helmet on first. We jump into action. We live by our words. Matthew 4, 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The Lord is telling us you don't live just by the bread you're eating in your belly. You live by words. Your life will follow your words. Your words will follow your thoughts. <laughs> the meditations will come from those thoughts and you taking it into your heart. And God is telling us, we don't live like that. You, If you're one of mine, you don't live like that. You live by every word of God. You live by his words, the words of his mouth. And this is the good news. We can control our minds. We can control our minds. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Isaiah 54.17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Those thoughts come in. That's a person speaking that to me, a demonic spirit speaking that to me. I condemn those words with my mouth. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, the thoughts in our mind, the arguing back and forth in our thoughts, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. What does that mean? It means I take that thought and I say, this is what the word says. So this is how I'm going to live. I condemn that thought, Satan. I take it captive. I get rid of it. That does not belong to me. I do not take ownership of that thought. Romans 12, 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We renew our minds. We live righteously and in salvation, defeating every sickness in our body, defeating everything that preserving us from the attacks of the enemy, making us whole where the enemy has created caverns in our soul. God makes us whole. Everything we have need of, every sin we need forgiven of, everything that we have need of, God has provided in his salvation. And we are to wear that on our minds, renew our minds, because God says you don't live by bread alone. You live by every word of my mouth. We live according to God's word. We make decisions according to God's word. We do it in God's way so that we reap 
all the benefits. We don't forget all the benefits. We live receiving all those benefits. We live satisfied because our thoughts are thinking the way God thinks. And because we think like God, we get the outcome that God has destined for us to have. We overcome evil with good. So this is my, this is my little uh, practical tool. This is what I want you to do. In essence, this is your scripture you can take to remind you. When those thoughts come, you have to jump immediately into action with the salvation, with the helmet of salvation, with the salvation you know you've received. With the truth of God's word, you have to jump into action immediately. And at the beginning, I told you to write down the thoughts that the enemy has given you. So this is the assignment. With every one of those thoughts, you need to get into God's word and take the truth and put the truth on that lie. You need to expose the lie of the enemy. What he has been saying to you is a lie. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what has happened. God makes us new. We There is therefore now no condemnation in Christ. I read you the scriptures that say there are no, it's no shame. There's no shame for us when we are in Christ and when we've been saved by him. That when we call on him, he answers. That we are made brand new creatures in him when we receive salvation. We are brand new creatures. The old has gone, the new has come. There is not anything that can stop you from having the full salvation that God, I don't care what sickness is in your body. You confess healing over your body. Get every healing scripture you can. Put the truth on that lie and use this scripture to remind you of all of these things you need to do regularly to combat that, to take those rotten thoughts and uproot that stuff out of your soul so that the truth can come in and the healing salve can come in of God and the healing balm of Gilead is what the Bible calls it. Or the hyssop. We would take the hyssop. It's just a weedy branch. It's just a worthless nothing. And we take our worthless nothing and we dip it in the blood of Jesus. And we put the blood over our doorpost over us. And we say, I'm under the blood. No more of these thoughts cannot attack me. I'm under the power of the blood of Jesus. I'm covered. That death angel has to pass by. You do not take that to yourself. Don't take that in. Don't, don't own that. Don't say my, my arthritis is acting up. My heart condition. My diabetes. Don't, don't own that with my, my. You're owning that. You, you dispel that. You get rid of that. You tell that spirit of infirmity to get out. You confess, I am healed in the name of Jesus and made whole. Everything that is missing in my life is no longer missing. We had a beautiful prophetic word spoken over my husband and I, and he has shared it with a couple people that he feels that it was also for. And I am giving that to you today. For this year, you are to decree with your mouth that there is nothing broken there is nothing missing and there is nothing lacking in your life. You have everything in the salvation of Jesus Christ that you need to mend everything that's broken, to make sure that there is nothing missing. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. There's nothing missing and there is nothing lacking. You can say, but I don't have enough faith. People like to say, I don't have enough faith. I wish I had more faith. You have nothing lacking. In Jesus Christ, you have everything that you need. So you take that and take this scripture, Philippians 4, 8. I read it once before. I'm going to read it again. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That's what you think of. You don't think about what is not true. He says, think about what's true. So we don't think about what's not true, what's noble. We don't think about the things that are not noble, the things that are not worthy to come before a king. We don't think about such things. We don't think about what's wrong. We think about what's right. We don't think about what's evil. We think about what's pure. We don't think about what's ugly. We think about what's lovely. I take everything in this scripture. Let this scripture teach you what you should think and what you should not think. And I promise you, if you will make this your habit, if you will make this your regular routine and you keep your helmet of salvation on, you will receive all of the benefits that God has for you and every victory that he is determined for you to win. Saints, I pray this has been a blessing to you. I encourage you even right now, adjust that, you know, girls like to say, we're going to adjust our crown, whatever, adjust your crown. But I say, adjust your helmet, <laughs> adjust your helmet of salvation. Make sure your thought life is right. 
You have the power to do that. The de devil does not have control over your mind. You do. You have the authority and the power. I gave you that scripture. Go back and listen to this again. I gave you so many scriptures. I promise I've given you enough in your tool belt to get to work. And you can see your mind change if you'll make yourself diligent to the work that God has called you to so that you receive salvation. He's made it available. He's made everything available for you. It's now yours to take. We take the helmet of salvation. Take it and make it your own. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.